last two episodes, we talked about the third planet from the sun, Earth, our planet. And we also talked about the Earth's moon, well, the moon. Today, we're going to be talking about Mars, the fourth planet from the sun. So let's get right into it. Mars is the fourth planet from the sun and it's also called the red planet due to its red coloration that you can probably see in the image on the side right here. The reason that Mars is red is because of iron oxide in the soil. Mars has little to no atmosphere with it being only the equivalent of 1% of Earth's atmosphere. Most of the atmosphere on Mars is carbon dioxide with only a tiny sliver being other gases that are not poisonous to human lungs. Mars is currently labeled lifeless because not only does it have a thin, poisonous atmosphere with mostly carbon dioxide, the soil on Mars is not suitable for agriculture. Besides Earth, Mars is the planet that we know most about. In fact, we know more about Mars than we do about the bottom of the ocean. It has been an easier task to study about Mars than it has to study about the bottom of the known ocean known as the Mariana Trench. Speaking of studying Mars, Mars has many sort of robots on its surface called rovers. Mars also has several satellites that orbit the planet, mapping it out and trying to find good locations for rovers to land on. Fun fact, Google Earth actually has another version of it called Google Mars which, as you may expect, is a 3D model of Mars's surface. There is also a Google Moon, which... You get the point. Mars is home to the largest canyon in the entire solar system, called Valles Marineris. It is about 7 kilometers deep and 4,000 kilometers long, approximately. Mars also has the highest mountain, as we know of, in the solar system called Olympus Mons. The mountain was named after where the Greek gods supposedly live, Olympus Mons, but most of you know it as Mount Olympus. Olympus Mons is about 624 kilometers wide and approximately 25 kilometers tall, way more than the eight kilometers that uh, how tall Mount Everest is. Mars is theorized to have had life once before. However, this life was wiped during a solar storm that, well, wiped the entirety of the life that could have been on Mars due to the fact that Mars has, again, a very thin atmosphere, as well as a basically um, not visible magnetic field. Mars could not prevent this solar storm from disrupting life as we know it. In fact, Venus may have also been affected by this and also may have had life. It was around this time as well that Earth looked like this. Earth's magnetic field at this time was strong enough to prevent this solar storm from causing anything bad to happen. Though, I don't think anything bad could happen to... A goal that many scientists have is to find life on the surface of Mars. And they do this by the aforementioned rovers. Scientists want to find life on Mars, at least in the form of microorganisms. Why? Because we're humans and we want to know everything. Because scientists, of course, want to know if there's still life on Mars. Scientists also want to terraform Mars to be more like Earth. Now, a question some of you may have is, if you can terraform Mars to be more like Earth, can you terraform Earth to be more like Mars? And the answer is, yeah, sure. Because if you have the technology to terraform Mars into an Earth, then you should have the technology to transform an Earth into a Mars. And given how humans are, it's probably easier to destroy a planet than to save one. The name Mars comes from the Roman god of war, Mars. Mars, in Greek mythology, and where he was known as Ares, also had two children, Phobos and Deimos. Phobos was the Greek god of fear and panic, 
and Thamos was the Greek god of, get this, terror and dread. Phobos and Deimos are now the names of the moons of Mars. And they don't really look like moons, they look more like giant potatoes. Fun fact, the suffix phobia comes from the Greek god Phobos, which was the Greek god of fear and panic. And you know, fear, panic, phobia, you get the point, right? It is believed that Mars's moons were originally from the asteroid belt until they were sent back to sender in a gravitational field of Jupiter. And then they were caught by the gravitational field of Mars. And now they're the moons of Mars today. Mars's moons will not last, however. Phobos will either turn into a giant ring system that won't really last long, or will come crashing down onto Mars's surface and potentially ruin any settlements that humans have at that point. Deimos, on the other hand, is slowly moving away from Mars, and eventually Mars will become a moonless planet. But hey, it might have rings at least. It was first believed that Mars was red because of, get this, red vegetation such as trees. Recently, as of recording today, the Mars rover Perseverance, which landed in 2020, converted carbon dioxide into oxygen. If we can convert carbon dioxide into oxygen by stripping the carbon atoms from it, then this could mean that we could potentially make the entire atmosphere, or at least most of it, mostly oxygen, and finally rebuild Mars from what it was in the past, maybe. This technology could also be used to clean Earth's atmosphere. And as a result, we can clean the atmosphere from a lot of carbon dioxide and have more oxygen in the atmosphere and have a better Earth where we don't have to worry about pollution. Thank you guys for watching. I really hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then give me one of these. And if you like the channel, then subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss whenever I upload a new video. Anyways, that'll be it for this video. I'm Nick, and my goal is to feed your brain. Hey. What is he doing?